Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning uh, on this beautiful chilly morning, uh, but we're getting there. Um, we have uh, uh, announcement. The window people are going to be coming this week, and so these are going to be gone. All right, these will be gone when you get here next Sunday. So uh, we'll be having those fixed and replaced, uh, so you get a chance to see that. Um, also, if the Ad Council people that are here, if you could stop in the Pairs and Spares room for just a few minutes uh, immediately following the service, we have just our church conference papers and things to sign and uh, vote on uh, so that we can take them this evening uh, to church conference. And then also the, the kids are rehearsing uh, today for their children's musical, and that's at 5 p.m., we're getting closer to that. That's at the end of the month, right? Uh, first Sunday in Advent. Um, poinsettia orders are pretty soon going to be available. Thanksgiving uh, is coming up, and our service with the Baptist Church will be on this year. And it's going to be here on Tuesday, November 22nd at 7 p.m. Uh, Dr. Dandridge will bring the message. Uh, we'll have special music from both churches. So our uh, sister church from... Where am I? Behind us <laughs> will be here at the Baptist Church, and uh, we look forward to sharing with them. We didn't get a chance to do that last year. COVID was still kind of uh, bothering uh, us a lot, and so we, we chose not to do that. The Handwell Festival is coming up at the end of the month. That's always an exciting thing. Uh, Operation Christmas Child uh, is today. Uh, you can still uh, complete boxes online. Uh, for Central Trinity, you can go online uh, to our webpage and you can complete those and then they'll be put together. Uh, we have all of them up here this morning. We're going to say a prayer for them during the prayer time. And so we're grateful for that. But right now, we wanted to take these few moments before we started uh, to recognize our veterans this morning because this is uh, our Veterans Sunday and we have all kinds of special things throughout the service. And... Uh, Caitlin, did you, is Caitlin back here? She's in the back. Did you put all those together? All right. Uh, well, we have little little take-homes for all of our veterans, and uh, uh, we're so happy for uh, that we can give you those. And so we'll do a little, uh, have a little fun this morning if our veterans uh, could stand, and we'll go through them here one at a time. Uh, who are our oldest living veterans here this morning that there you go all right we got lots of them here this morning uh, if you could if you could stay standing for just a minute until we we get you your take home and we uh if you could stay and if, if you can stay standing you can if you can't if you have to sit that's okay too uh we have a f a f who is who is our closest that just finished? Is that Amy probably? Anybody else? Uh, all right. Because you, you quit in, in 2019? 16. So she just recently was finished, and we thank you so much uh, for your service for that, and we thank you for the rest of you. Who is our – who served in – Something that maybe nobody else did. What did you serve in, Mac? Korean? I thought probably that was those. Who are my Korean people? Anybody else? And Bill, Bill and Mac. Okay, well, thank you so so much for that. And then uh, the rest of us, we, we go along the line. But I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure how far back that we went. Uh, when I first started in ministry, I even had one person still in World War II. <laughs> uh, but... That was a long time. Thank you so much, each of you, for your service. We appreciate it. We love you. And thank you for families. Uh, I wanted to, as as we pray, if you have somebody that's in your family that's in the military or somebody that was in your family and passed away because they gave their life for uh, their country, if you, if you would stand and we'll say a prayer together. Anybody else? All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, and we, we give our veterans to you this morning. We thank you for their service, and 
We thank you for their love and of their country and the giving of their time and energy to, uh, to fight for each of us so that we can be here and have freedoms uh, in this country that usually are so wonderful that all, all others wish to be here and be a part of it. And uh, We're thankful for that, and we, we give them uh, a salute this morning and thank you for their uh, service to our country. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Yes. Okay. All right. And what was the place to go to? Okay. Okay. It's across the street from Subway in Duncan Falls. Uh, and that starts at 1130 right after church. You can go to that and get a meal if you're a veteran. And we thank you for that. Nice.
Good morning, church. Our opening hymn today can be found on page 697, America, My Country, Tis of Thee. We will sing verses 1 through 4. Would you please stand? remain standing for our Apostles' Creed, found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
succeeded. At this time, children are dismissed to Kids Zone Worship. Our prayer hymn this morning can be found on page 397. I need thee every hour. We will sing verse 5. Just a moment and share together our time of prayer this morning. Um, do we have any that we'd like to share? And Brad's got the microphone if you could give him a second to get to you. And anybody? All right, David, thanks. I would like to ask for prayers for uh, Ryan Miller. He's a 44 year old man in Duncan Falls. He had a stroke, and he's paralyzed on his left side. He's trying very diligently to recover his usefulness again. Okay. Ryan Miller, you said? 44. And a stroke. Any others? Oh, over here to the side. Hold on, he's coming. Yes. Sister in uh, West Virginia, you said, stage four cancer. What's her first name? Say. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, we had a, it's an indirect family member. Um, he's 22 and he survived his heart transplant last Thursday and he's doing great even walked to after they changed him to a private room he even walked to the room so I want to thank everybody for keeping him and to continue to keep him in his prayers while he heals yeah it's always amazing the, the things that they can do with that and thank you for sharing that uh, I appreciate, too, the uh, prayers for my mom this week because she had her procedure on Friday and everything uh, went well as could be expected. And we thank you for uh, thinking of us and thinking of her. Any others? I thought I saw one more hand. Nope. All right. Let's go ahead and spend a few moments in silent prayer then, and we'll pray together. Father, we come before you this morning. We give those joys and concerns to you. Those watching online with us this morning, we were with you as we gave an opportunity for your joys and your concerns. Just because you're 
not present in person with us, but online doesn't mean that we don't think and remember each of those as well. And Father, we give all these things to you when we come together uh, each and every Sunday as we give our time and energy and our talents and our gifts and we give those opportunities to you to share together. We thank you for your love and for your grace and for your mercy. We ask, Father, that as we come together and as we pray together, may you be with us to guide us this morning uh, and each and every morning as we pray the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In honor of the veterans this Veterans Weekend, we will be singing the battle hymn of the Republic. Toward the end of the song, I will turn around to you this morning and ask that you join us in the chorus, the glory, glory, hallelujah section. So there aren't any words on the screen, but glory, glory, hallelujah. Would you please join in with us when I turn to you?
Thank you, you so, so much, much. Ian, Jim, choir. That was beautiful. Thank you, everybody else, for singing to you as well. It's always one of those songs that really uh, gets you going, doesn't it? So. Well, this morning I was talking about uh, if you don't have a plan, it's a wish. And uh, for me, I, and I don't know how many of you experienced this, I shared in the first service, we live uh, out on that um, Zanesville, Nashport line there on uh, Vista Green there. If you go out Maple as it turns into uh, Nashport out there, just right past the Shell gas station there, behind it in that subdivision. And so sometimes we get weather and different things that maybe you don't get uh, in here because we live a little bit out on the edge of town and you might live in town. And the other day, yesterday, we actually got something that I always begin to wish for this time of the year. And we had a little participation. And those of you that know me know that I love snow. And it started to turn into snow just a little bit. And Sammy was there with me and Jackson. And we were looking out the window. And we were like, it's snowing. And you couldn't tell because the flakes were coming down. And when they hit something, they turned into water. So, uh, But if you were outside uh, or if you were inside, you could see them uh, before they landed. And I always enjoy that time of the year because winter is still one of those things for me that even though I'm just a big kid and not a kid anymore, seems like fun. You know, it's a winter wonderland and I love to, uh, some of my favorite moments that I've ever had in my life have been, you know, it's a little dark, it's not chilly windy, it's just cold and there's the stillness of the night and you look outside and the snow is blowing and you're standing in the middle of it and it's just a very pretty thing. I've had lots of moments like that in my life and those are ones that I love and snow is a big part of that. Uh, I think the reason that that happens for me is just like uh, the rest of you that are in the 45 to 53, 54, 55 uh, age range, you were of a certain age in 1978 when it all went down and that was about the last time that that happened around here in this area where you could remember that if you like snow after about a couple of days a week you were pretty sick of it by then because it just lasted forever now when you're young it seems like the snow lasts forever right it just seems like it hangs around uh, as i've gotten older it doesn't seem like it does that anymore and i feel bad for my kids they seem to still enjoy it but they don't get the same feeling of what we had. And in 1978, I remember that uh, wishing feeling as they said, oh, a big storm's coming and it's going to put in lots of snow. And they say that kind of stuff all the time and it never happens. And I remember wishing that it did happen. And next thing you know, uh, I have one of the favorite scenes in my mind. And then also we have a picture of it too, is I'm about six and a half, seven, probably close. I probably had just turned seven, maybe. <laughs> And my sister was getting close to five, turning five. And we are standing on top of the roof of our house uh, in Convoy, Ohio. Now, how did that happen with a blizzard? Is because we lived at the end of a cul-de-sac. At the very end of it, the road ended in our driveway. And so the church was at the other end of it. And the wind blew down from the church, blew down that big, long hall drive where there were like six or seven houses on each side, blew up our driveway, up over the top of our house and into the field behind it. And as I kept doing it, the snow kept coming. It kept building up that wind slope that it has until eventually you couldn't see our house and all you could see was snow. In fact, it looked like uh, there was no house there anymore. And I remember uh, thinking that. Now, that wish would have changed a lot in today's world because since then, I've had lots of things happen to me and I've gotten old and crotchety sometimes, you know, you know how you get, you guys are getting older too. And things that 
didn't bother you when you were younger would bother me now. And I think back to some of the things that I love to do in that blizzard, and I would be terrified if I did them now or if I caught my children doing them. I'd probably lock them in the house and never let them leave again. Because my sister and I, I can remember with the friends in the neighborhood, we had dug from the beginning of that mound of uh, snow in up into the porch in the house all these tunnels and holes, including a huge uh, igloo-type uh, hold right in the middle of all that snow. You could stand on the top of it and jump up and down because we had iced it all in and everything. We had to crawl to get in or we had to push on the top of it and push our way into it. If I tried to do that now, forget about it. <laughs> I can't even think about it. It makes my hands start sweating. Just like the other day uh, when Dennis was climbing up the ladder in here for my dad in church. It makes my hands sweat. Uh, I could never do that now. Uh, when I was younger, though, I thought that was fun, and I loved to go in that little igloo, and I loved to climb around all that stuff, and my sister did too, uh, and it was so much fun that I never once even thought of like barricading her in there and leaving her in there for a while, because then she would have had those same issues that I had, and we didn't play that way then, and I loved it. We had forts that we built, all kinds of things. And it was one of the great wish wonderland moments of my life. Now, for the adults and for those of you that were old enough that went through that time period, that was not a fun time because for a long period of time there was no heat, no electric, no any of that kind of stuff, right? Then uh, if you didn't have a fireplace, you were trying to figure out we don't have all of our uh, – generators that we have at night you know if you if you're outside and the the electric flickers off for just a moment you can go outside and instead of hearing you know the birds and whatever else you hear because like everyone has a generator now most people do uh and they have those like generac ones that when the lights go off it just immediately goes on we didn't have that kind of stuff back then uh we had to actually in order to get warm like a couple other people uh, on our street, we had to go and lay and sleep on the floor of our neighbor because they had a fireplace and there was like 20 people asleep in there. Uh, I thought that was fun. I would never want to do that now. I can't sleep by anybody, let alone sleep. I'm sleeping next to my wife and she's punching me in the face every night because she says I snore or whatever. I don't know. Uh, she's trying to get me to go do one of those CPAP things and I'm not wanting to do it because... I've done this my whole life. Why all of a sudden now is it that I need to do this? Uh, and also I'm a talker at night too, so uh, that just to show you that. <laughs> but for me, it's like something that was so cool that for everybody else, it wasn't. Now I'll leave you with that thought as we move over to Joshua. <clears throat> Joshua is where we're talking this morning. It's chapter 5, and it's verses 13 through 15, and then it's verse 6, 1 through 5, and it's a continuation of the first chapter. And <clears throat> basically what that is, is we are with Joshua and the people of Israel as they have arrived at Jericho. Jericho is the city that is there. Those of you that uh, know history, know of Troy, and you've got the giant walls of Troy, right? And nobody could breach them, nobody could get through them, and we had the Trojan horse and all that kind of fun stuff that we remember from uh, back then. And then also, now, in that period of time, we have Jericho, and it had big walls, and it couldn't be breached, and the people in there always felt safe. It was a big city. They didn't worry about people getting over or in the walls because you couldn't because they were impossible to get through and scale at that time with the equipment and things that they had. And so they felt safe. Outside the walls were Joshua and all of the Israelite army, which was a big army because, remember, they were coming from Egypt, and they had been there for a long time. And when you're in one place for a long time, you accumulate things. My parents... We're just moving, and you should see all the stuff that they have. I haven't yet 
<coughs> been able to go into their new house since they got everything in there, and apparently the garage is like my garage is now. <coughs> got lots of stuff in it. But we have uh, this accumulation of years and years of things, and not only that, but when you stay in one place and families are built, you have accumulation of years and years of children that grown up, had their own children, had their own children, and so on and so forth. So you got all these people. They are outside the gates, the walls of this city. And the people inside, they're on top, and they're saying, nana, nana, boo, boo, you can't get in, right? <coughs> You're not going to be able to get in because we've got these huge walls, and you can't get around them no matter how many people that you have. So here's the story. So when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up, and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, <coughs> Take off your hand, your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. And when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. All right. Uh, Caitlin, if you want to go back to the beginning of that. <coughs> so we've got Joshua. He's standing here. He's got all of the people. He's trying to figure out what to do here because uh, to lead the people around is not going to happen because then he'll be trapped by the army. He, to lead the people through, he can't because they've got walls. And so he's got a conundrum here of how to get to the land of milk and honey and where God wanted them to go. Moses is already out of the picture. Joshua was in charge. He was in charge of the army to begin with. Moses had brought them so far. Joshua now had to bring them this last little bit. But the, one of the biggest last things they had to do was go through Jericho. <coughs> well, Joshua's thinking all these things. <coughs> He's walking. And he looks up and sees someone standing in front of him with a drawn sword. I don't know about you, but for me, that would be something that would be a little terrifying. If, you, if I came in here today, and as we're here and we're present and I'm preaching and talking to you, and someone pulls out uh, a sword and comes down uh, the middle aisle and just stands there like this with a drawn sword in their hands, probably most of you in here are going to be under the pews or running out of here. Uh, there are a few of you in here that who knows what you would do. You might, you might have some things that you carry with you that you'd knock some of those people down. And who knows what would happen? It'd probably be chaos. But here in this instance, Joshua is right there. Jericho is right there. And a man or a person, a being, stands there with a drawn sword. Now, we know from other eyewitness accounts and writings and things that the description of the man was a little more in other places, and he really probably wasn't a man. He was a being, a spiritual being. What's another wish that you had when you were little? That there are other people on other planets. There's ETs roaming around, and there's wonderful... Uh, 
spaceships that are going to come down out of the sky, right? Well, who knows what they thought of when they were younger because they didn't have spaceships. They thought maybe a camel was going to come out of the sky. I don't know. But they thought that something was going to happen, and there was a different being, and this otherworldly being was there, so that would cause excitement. And so he's got a sword. He's another worldly being. Uh, and he, Joshua says to him, are you for us or are you f against us? He doesn't run. He asks the question. And we go on to the next part. You can flip over, Caitlin, or Michael, or whoever's doing the flipping. Thank you. Uh, and the man says, or the being says, neither. And then just casually he says, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. So he is the commander of the Lord's army. Now we, we sang just a little bit ago one of my favorite church songs. You know, it makes you want to get out and march, you know. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I love that song. All right. Well, this makes me think of commander of the Lord's army. What's that one from when you were little? I was in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Right? Anybody, Anybody sing those things? things? Nobody sings those things? I'm sure Ann sang those things. Somebody did. I sang them. And we did that. But here is the actual commander of the army of the Lord, which we know from Scripture and other things, is Michael, the archangel. So now we really know who it is. It's not a dude, it's not a guy, it's not somebody else. It's not somebody from inside the walls coming out to make them think that we're here and it's just a really big guy. No, it's not someone from outer space. It is an angel of the Lord. And it isn't just any angel. It's Michael the archangel saying, I am here as commander of the army of the Lord. I have now come. So Joshua, he immediately falls to the ground, face down in reverence, and he asks him with his face covered, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Now it's capitalized there because, remember, we know who Joshua was. He was an Israelite. Israel's cannot say the Lord's name. They can't say the Lord. They can have to say Yahweh. It sounds like breathing. And so he says, what message does my well, have for his servant? That's what it came out as. And he says, what message does God have for me? Go on to the next one. And the commander of the Lord's army, remember, they... I'll keep telling you who this person is, says this. You want to know what this is about? Well, first, you do this. Take off your shoes for where you're standing is holy. Now, I know for a fact that there's probably at least 30, 35 ladies in here that when people walk into your home, you say, take your shoes off. Or it's just natural and people do it because they know that you're going to yell at them and they're afraid of you. Or they just do it because they have done it at so many else's people's houses. They just do it anyways, right? How many people have people take your shoes off when you come into the house? Oh, you liars. There's more of you. There's more there. You're just afraid now that I've said it. You don't want to be like standoffish. You want people to come to my house and take your shoes off. And so... The commander of the Lord's army is saying, take off your sandals, for you're standing on holy ground. And we say, take your shoes off, because you're coming into my home. Lisa and I, for 25 years, had youth group in our house on Wednesdays nights. Anywhere from when we first started 25 years ago at one church to for five kids to uh, at that same church one night we had like 115, 120 kids in our living room. Uh, who knows where they sat? Those kids, when they came in, they would do all kinds of things to our house, just like kids do. We're probably on our 15th or 16th couch in 25 years of marriage. And I don't know why. We're so stupid. We still buy nice ones. We have a nice one now. And you know who's breaking it? Jackson. 
because he's doing the same thing that those kids do, which is we now have gotten older, we have a little more things going on, and so uh, we, we were able to purchase the couch with the little buttons on the side to kick your feet out instead of having to work the little handle. Well, he sits there with a little button going up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Or he just gets up whenever the legs are up to go to the bathroom instead of putting them down, then getting up. And so it tips over. So whatever. Kids have done this to us for years, and it's fine. They take their shoes off, but they do all kinds of other things. But I'll tell you what. I even had at the beginning of this... A couple of marijuana dealers that I knew for a fact did that at school, and they came in as teenagers for the first time into our home, and they still took their shoes off. So those of you that say, I don't want to take my shoes off, know that even the worst of the worst take their shoes off. But here, the commander of the army of the Lord is saying, you are taking your shoes off not because you're in someone's home and you're being respectful, but because you are standing here in front of me and I am representing someone else, someone whose name you can't even say, and so get your shoes off while you're standing here. And so Joshua did. Now, he was the general of the army, so he probably just didn't have sandals on. He probably had, like, the wraparound kind of sandals and things, so he had to take all those off. It wasn't just like nowadays where he could just walk out of his shoes or he had Crocs, right? You couldn't see the army of the Lord uh, of Israelites, you know, just having some Crocs on and kicking them off. It would at least probably be, you know, the camo color, so we'll blend in. Uh, but we go on to the next part there. Joshua did as he was told, and they knew that the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out, no one came in. That's in quotes there. So they're just repeating that. Keep going. Then... The Lord, notice, says to Joshua. So now we've switched, and it's not just Michael, the archangel, that's there with the sword staying, but when he's opening his mouth, it's God directly coming. And so the Lord, who Joshua can't look at, can't see, can't say his name, is talking to him, and he's saying, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and fighting men this day. March around the city once with all the armed men, do this for six more days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of me, the Ark of the Covenant. Keep going. And then on the last day, the seventh day, march around the city on that day seven times. And with the priests blowing the trumpets, when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army at once give a loud shout. And the walls will collapse. And as an army, you will go in. Straight in, it says. That's a pretty amazing thing, right? So the Lord, not just Michael the archangel, is saying, you go around the city and march seven times. And on the last day, march seven more times. Six times on the first six days, seven on the last day. Priests blaring the trumpets. I don't know what trumpets looked like at that time. How many trumpet players do we have in here? We only got like three? Nobody else has played the trumpet? Four? Five? Six? We at least have seven, right? So this is my proposal. Imagine what this would look like. We are not the Lord's army, but we are the Lord's army of Central Trinity. And I'm telling you this. This may not be Jericho, but Zanesville's got its own walls. And the Lord your God came to you, and what if he did say that? Now, in these day and times period, you have the archangel Michael who then turns into the voice of the Lord talking. All you've got is big old fat preacher me standing up here in front of you. And I'm trying to tell you what God says, but it's hard to listen. Why? Because there's distractions. There's distractions in life. We have had more distractions in this church in the last year than I've ever had in any church, period. And they've been distractions of the nth magnitude. 
We have lost people because of these distractions. We have lost people from listening because of these distractions because they think, who knows what's happening here? And I'm telling you this, the reason all that is happening is because the Lord our God, who we probably shouldn't say and we should just whisper his voice and his name because of what he does for us, is telling us that on this day that we too should march in this city. How would we do that? Well, coming up here at the end of this month on the 30th, it just so happens that my wife has invited, just like she did last year, us all to be in a parade for Christmas. Why is the parade for Christmas? Well, it's a parade for the town, but it's also a parade at Christmas celebrating that we are entering the time on the last day of the month of Advent of waiting in preparation for the king. And so what if for that parade, which we've already got something planned, we walked on the city of Zanesville, we had the trumpets blowing, and on that seventh time the trumpets blew and we yelled a mighty yell for the Lord. What would happen? What would occur? I know. Do you know? You see, I'm here to help you try to know. But you've got to learn. You've got to read. You've got to hear. You've got to pay attention. You've got to pray. You've got to do all those things on your own and in church in order to get to that part so that you know so that when the Lord who Joshua could not even look at as he was present there in front of him as an archangel he covered his face listened to what the angel said and the angel said don't be afraid but go and do this actually he didn't even say don't be afraid he just said go and do it and when it happens this great city that has been there for forever The walls will collapse and fall. People are going to die. Your enemies are going to be delivered. And you will march through the city and march on to the land that I have promised you. Well, if on that day at the end of this month we march and we go in that parade and we hand out things for Central Trinity and we talk to people about who we are and what we're about, I guarantee you that on that day people will see what this church is about. And maybe the walls of this city will begin to fall down. Because we've got them for this church. So I guarantee you that there are walls everywhere else as well. And they're put up because we have reached a point in this world where it wouldn't matter probably if the archangel was present. And brandishing a sword. Because we'd look at that moment and we say, oh, it's just another person coming into church and trying to disrupt it and get them out. Instead of looking and saying, what is it and who is it that you're here for? And then taking that moment and hearing God's plan. Because, folks, if we are just sitting here and wishing that the hard stuff will go away, wishing that the things that we used to love will happen again, they will not and they won't because you're not playing, paying attention to the plan. And the plan is written. It's written in church everywhere. It's written in the pews. It's written on the walls. Jim plays it. Ann has him sing it. Andy has him play and sing it. Caitlin and the band of the first service, they have them play it and sing it. I try to make you read it. I go back over it again. I still have people who come to me and say, I wish that you'd preach the word more. (laughs) I can't do it anymore. I literally open the Bible every Sunday for you, and it's on the screen. I maybe don't hold it. It's right here. I got actually like 47 versions right here. Is that enough Bibles? And then I'm telling you, then I'm telling you what the Bible says. 
But for those that wish, it's not going to happen. Because the plan of the Lord is this. Follow me. Hide your face from me. Fear me. Because I am the Lord your God. Come to me. Hear my word. And I'll change your land. And I'll do it. Because you're listening to me. And I'm telling you, folks, we can make a difference here and make a change. Look at all these boxes up here. Do you understand where these go to the children that they go to? What a special thing that is to be able to give that. Hopefully, when you purchased these, you prayed over them and thought over them. We prayed over them, and we're going to today and dedicate them. Why? Because... As almost 200 that are up here right now, and there's probably a few more that we'll add later. We'll hopefully have close to that 250 that we wanted. That's representing 250 children that might not get a whole lot of other things, but they're at least going to get that. If you were a kid, would you wish for that? Would you wish for a little tiny shoebox full of things that that happened? You probably wish for a bigger stack than that, didn't you? Go back and watch your home videos and what it was. I love this time of the year where they show those things on TV and it's like old timey videos and things and you got the little kids and they're opening the presents and how excited that they are and they run to mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever it is and they say, thank you and it's so wonderful. And then you've got the people, you know who they are. You might have been them when you were little. They're the person that when they get the present that they want, that they've been wishing for for so long. Or even if it's just a present, they're using it. If they got underwear, they're pulling it on over their clothes. If they got a coat, they're wearing it. If they got a scarf, they have it on covering their face. And they're using all those things as they're still opening the other presents. You probably had a kid like that in your family. Why? Because it's the dream. It's what they love. And it's not about Christmas, about getting things. But it's about Christmas and knowing that at that moment, your wish was to become a plan. And it was a plan that was written for years and years and years. And on this day and on each and every Sunday, each and every day. We should go back through it because we are the army of the Lord. We are the ones that are marching. When we are too old to march anymore or too old to breathe out that word of God, then when we're gone, someone else should take up are marching because we got a lot of places to go and in this town we've got a lot of places to go because it's big and spread out and you might say well there's churches all over the place john people can go there to those churches they can but just like our church they're not none of these churches are full I don't hear people getting on the news and saying, hey, you know what, this Christmas, just stay at home because we're packed. We got too many. Stay at home. In fact, you can't even watch it on the Internet because once we turn it on, it's just going to turn off because so many people are watching it anyways. So I'm sorry, but you, you've got to celebrate Jesus somewhere else. We don't do that. Why? Because it would be awesome to have that problem be one of our greatest wishes well our wishes are God's plans and the plan that God has for this church is wonderful and all you have to do is cover your face cover my face cover those of your children get down on your knees and say yes Lord what is it that you want? And the Lord your God, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, he will tell you. 
because that plan has been in place since the beginning. You want to know what God looks like when he does that? I don't know. I grew up in the 80s. And so when I hear these plan type things, you know what I think of? I think of a certain older fellow with his hair pulled over who was an actor and he always had a big old giant cigar in his hand, gloves on his hand, and a kind of a whitish type coat. And he would say, I love it when a plan comes together. You know who that is? That was George Pappard. He was a great old guy. Uh, he was a great actor, too. And he could convince you in that plan. And I'll tell you what, be convinced now. When you hear and read the plan that God has for you as it comes out of his scripture, think of God instead of George Burns sitting there with his dogie. Maybe think of it as George Pappard. That's a little cooler, at least. And saying, I love it when a plan comes together because this is the plan that I have for you. Listen to me, and the walls are going to come tumbling down. Don't listen to me, and you'll be devoured. And that'll be it. We bow your heads with me. Father, as we come and we go into this place each and every Sunday, each and every other day that we're here, may we know the plan that you have for us. May we know that you know the hairs on our head, how many there are, what they're about. And so because of that, Father, we know that you've got a plan for every moment and every opportunity. And so as you send your witnesses and send your truths, may we hear it. May we get down on our knees and we say, yes, we know, God, give it to us. And those walls will come tumbling down. We give that to you, Father, this morning because we need it. We need you. We need those walls to be torn down. We need to share in the truth that we have that we know that is you. And so when we come time for that parade, may we march and may we share, may we give and may we show people the love that you have for us so that we might share that love with the world. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning can be found on page 698. God of the Ages. We will sing verses 1 and 4. Would you please stand?
but another beautiful one that we've sang here today. And so as you go from this place, may you go and know uh, uh, that the love of the Lord goes with you. Take it and use it and spread it to all that you meet and see throughout the week and share it with the world so that the walls in this world can come tumbling down. It was good to see you this morning. Thank you.